A majority of people that come to you with a coin collection either think their coins are valuable or they're worthless. Not all, but a majority do. When we're talking about why do coin dealers exist, why are they important for the market, we're going to spend a few moments today understanding, describing how the market works for coin collectors, coin dealers, and why it's important for you to know this before you sell your coins. See, Casey and I have been selling coins ever since the start of COVID in 2020. Uh, I started off selling one coin and then I sold two coins and then now we're selling a lot of coins per month. What coin dealing has allowed the market to understand is what is wholesale, what is retail, and what is a rarity. See, when someone comes to a coin dealer, they're wanting to know those things and they're wanting to have a specific value of those things. What can be misconstrued sometimes is that if someone that you're coming to to buy their collection thinks everything that they have is extremely valuable or they think everything they have is extremely worthless, that is where a lot of gray area can occur when you're going to work through a coin collection. So we're going to spend a few moments today on the whiteboard. We're going to tell you guys what our opinion is of the coin market and how it can be easily broken down and understood by you just so you can get a bird's eye view of what a coin dealer works with and understands on a daily basis about coin collecting and numismatics. So when you think about meeting up with a coin dealer, you should think about it like a job interview. Everybody has come to the table and they're all dangerous. They all know at least what their job position is going to be like, right? Someone that sits down with you, they say, hey, well, this is our job expectations. This is what we expect of you. And then you're gonna sit down with them and you say, here's my cover letter, my resume, my past work experience, and let me answer any questions that you might have, right? So it's a great song and dance between two mutual trustful parties. So there is one side, which is you. What should you do when you have a coin collection that you either know the value of or don't know the value of? And then what should the goal of a coin dealer be when they're meeting. First thing is educate. They should educate you on things that you might not have a lot of understanding on, right? Say you know what a coal Morgan dollar is worth, but you don't know what a key date Morgan dollar is worth, or you don't know um, is a coin cleaned or not cleaned, right? So they're gonna educate you as much as possible on the questions that you might have. Once again, you need to have those questions, right? If you don't know something, but you tried your best to learn it, but you still wanna be educated, you can ask the coin dealer that you feel like you And they're going to communicate with you. They're going to text you. They're going to call you. They're going to sit down with you in person. They're going to be at your dinner table, possibly. They're going to be in your shop, in the, their shop, possibly, right? And then they're going to deliver value. They're going to either write out coin lot. We feel like the coin lot is worth this. Or they're going to write out specific values for specific coins. And then they're going to offer it to you. That is their job, right? They're supposed to be understanding of what the market is. And then they're going to deliver that to you in terms of what the value is. They're still going to make a profit. Or you are not in the nonprofit business, we're in the coin business. So what should you do? So say you come to somebody with a big collection, or you come to somebody with a lot of key day coins, three or four key day coins, or you come to someone with some bullion, get multiple opinions. Give someone a call, right? You can call many coin shops. You can use the phone in your pocket to say, hey, I'm going to call Heritage, I'm going to call Stacks, I'm going to call a local guy, I'm going to call a guy I met at the coin show. Multiple opinions is valuable because that's what you can use to help increase the value of your coins. If someone calls you or you call them and you say, hey, I have a half Disme, you don't even know what a half Disme is worth and they offer you $5,000 for it, that coin could be worth $100,000 or more, right? And so if you called somebody else, they might offer you 100,000, they might offer you 80,000, right? So your multiple opinions that you try to find will result in a higher uh, payout for you. Next thing you should do is you should educate yourself on the coins that you have. Do the best that you can. You have a phone and it does wonders for you. You should look at eBay. What do they sell for on eBay? What do they sell for at auction? And you should be consuming content related to coins. Spend 20 hours, spend 15 hours, maybe watching our content, maybe watching Ben the Coin Geek, maybe watching uh, anyone else that you might feel like is important to you. And then there's one more big thing, which is focus. If you feel like your coin collection is worth a lot of money, that should be a big focus for you. That's a big focus. If you're saying, oh, I'm gonna, I have to miss two days of work to figure out or sit down with somebody and work out a, a deal on this coin collection, or I have to miss a few days of work to increase my knowledge, you might have to do that. That's a small thing compared to the bigger picture. You might only get one coin collection in your life and you wanna make sure it's worth it. So focus on the big things and minimize the small things, especially in this time. And so someone that feels like their coin collection is all valuable or they think it's all worthless, they're gonna think about a pie like this. It's all valuable. I want all the money. I want 
error money for coins, right? I want $300 for a coin that's worth 30, right? Or there's someone else that says, oh, everything here is just melt. Just give me back a melt. It's worthless. And so what a coin dealer and what you should try to merge in on here is try to figure out what the market actually is. And the market is actually broken up into three things. First thing is rarities. 5% probably of the coin market is focused on high-end rarities, right? One of 20 coins that exist. Coins you can't find. Coins that are sold every 20 years. Once that coin is offered once, it's never offered ever again. It's impossible to find. It's made in backdoor deals. One big auction company might have a collector that owns it and they call another auction company and then that guy go picks it up and boom. You'll never see these coins most likely. It's like being struck by lightning if you have it in your coin collection or winning the lottery. Retail is a little bit different. Retail is the demand is very high for a certain coin and the supply is very low, but there is a lot of, you know, that coin might pop up three times a year, four times a year, once a year, right? So it's still in the market enough to provide indicators of what you might want to pay for it. Right? So somebody with a rarity like a 1792 half Disney, they might say, I have the only one available. You need to give me 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 more than what uh, the last one sold for. And if you don't pay it, you'll never have it. That's a rarity. Retail, like I said, demand might be high and supply might be low. And that would drive up the auction price, right? So if you're talking about a CAC seated dollar, or if you're talking about a gold piece that pops up once or twice a year, that might be the new market maker price once it sells at auction. So if you bring that CAC seated dollar and the last one sold for a thousand bucks, but there's 10, 15, 20, 100 people looking for that coin, and that's the only one that's gonna be on the auction block, you might sell it for 1750, but the last one sold for a thousand, right? So that's where retail can start to increase over time, and that's an interesting piece of the pie. When we're talking about wholesale numbers, we're gonna get that in just a moment. There's no numbers out there from bigger outfits that are looking for it. There's no set number. And what a set number is, is that we buy them for this price, we sell them for that price. There's no number out there for it because it's very hard to track, like I said. With wholesale, things are changing every single day, but they're not changing by a wide margin. Wholesale sometimes has to do with bullion, which is silver and gold, but sometimes it has to do with more common things like wheat cents or coal morgan dollars, or common graded morgan dollars. All of these have numbers by wholesalers. And so when you're talking to somebody at their house and you're a coin dealer, you have to tell them, hey, I'm sending these to wholesalers. I'm not going to, there's no point of retailing it because the demand for this is not very high and the supply is exuberant. There's so many graded morgan dollars out there. There's so many coal morgan dollars out there. There's so many wheat cents out there that I'd rather just wholesale it. It's too much effort to try to drive demand for this product. And so when you're sitting with somebody and they think, because they didn't educate themselves, they didn't get multiple opinions, they didn't focus on this collection, they think their Morgan dollar is worth $3,000 or something, right? And it's just a coal common day Morgan dollar. You could say, hey, I'm just gonna let you know, I run into thousands of these every single year. I buy them for 22 or I buy them for 24 and I sell them to wholesalers for 26. And the wholesaler might say, I'll sell them to you for 28 or I'll sell them to you for 30. Someone says, my coin's worth 300 or 3,000. You say, hey, how many of them can I ship to you at 28 bucks? And right there, that should eliminate everything, right? Because now you're educating them, you're communicating with them what their coin collection's actually worth in terms of value. And so when we walk in certain scenarios, we say, hey, we pay 24 bucks and we sell them for 26 and we can order them for you for 30. And that, for you, can educate them on the wholesale market of them, right? Uh, same thing with graded Morgan dollars. A graded Morgan dollar might sell for 77 to a wholesale. You might be able to sell it to them for that, and you might wanna buy it for 70. If you're driving across the world, you might wanna buy them for 60, or you might wanna buy them for 65, right? And they also have to be white, which you guys don't have to worry about that. And then they said they'd sell them for 82. So when someone comes to you and says, hey, my dollar is worth $100 and it's Mint State 64, hey, brother, I can order them for you for 82 bucks, right? So as we move together and as we eliminate all the things that would romanticize a deal, you start to come together and say, hey, this is actually, they're actually telling me the truth here. They're actually working with me to educate me more than I already have on what everything's worth. And so when we speak about these things, right? 
Um, if the demand is very low, that means the supply is very high and not a lot of people are focusing on them. So if we talk about wheat cents, like we said, someone might buy them from you for three cents and sell them for four cents, which would indicate just by the price that demand is very low, right? If the coin is spendable at one cents and they're giving you three cents and they're selling it for four cents, there ain't much there, right? So when someone starts to not have a well-rounded or at least try to develop a well-rounded view of what the coin market is, it could start to hurt their trust in coin dealers, hurt their trust in numismatics, hurt their trust in coin collecting. But if they did all these things, they would have a better understanding and the coin dealer would have an easier job, right? And the coin dealer, all he has to do is be honest, straightforward, and give them an accurate depiction of what the coin community looks like in terms of how things are traded hands, and uh, then they can move from there. So if you're wanting to sell a coin collection, if you're wanting to buy a coin collection, it's very good to study the market. It's very good to know what things are worth, know what somebody will pay you for them, and then you guys can come to a deal. So I hope this was valuable to you. If you guys feel like this is valuable to you, I want you to leave a like, comment your thoughts on what we had to speak about today. Do you agree with what we said? And uh, I would like to hear that down below. Subscribe, more videos coming out every single week. So a bonus tip that we would like to talk to you guys about also when you're trying to educate yourselves is to use GraySheet or use PCGS CoinFAX. You can actually go onto GraySheet's website, buy what dealers use to value coins at. And you can also use their features on the app to determine what things sell for and when they sold, right? So like we said, a lot of ways to educate yourself. It's about you working very hard to understand the coin market and then being dangerous when it comes to working with somebody else and liquidating that collection. So last week we ended up going to College Station to pick up a few better date Morgan dollars in Rattlers and a lot of collectors are after these. A lot of these coins were cracked out because people thought they were undergraded back then and now they're in new NGC or PCGS holders. And the cool thing about these better dates is that they're not only better dates in Rattlers, but they're also consecutive cert numbers. So if you start off on the left here, it's 501, 08, 01, and this is 02, this is 03, and this is 04. So when you're able to buy cool Morgan dollars like this in Rattlers, and then you get that extra little interesting cherry on top as well, there's something unique about it. And what this also tells you if you're someone wanting to focus on where something comes from, what the backstory is on it. They said that they brought this into the shop in College Station and it was his dad's and he sold it to the shop. And I'm like, that, tr that story might not necessarily be true, but when you look at the consecutive cert numbers on them, you could tell that this was from an original collection, which means that the customer that sent this into PCGS way back when sent these coins in consecutively and uh, I do think that that story measures out and I do think these coins are pretty cool. So here are some better day gold coins that we ended up buying at the Grapevine Coin Show this weekend. If you want to take a quick look here, this is something that we were able to add to our personal collection. 1834 Classic Head $5 gold piece. They're extremely tough to find CAC approved. Great originality of the coin. Nothing mess with it. Just wear on the coin. Um, in a long period of time. AU and you know Mint State are very expensive. This one was pretty affordable and it was our favorite purchase of the whole entire show. We ended up buying a Charlotte Gold piece, but let's talk about the New Orleans first. This is 1854 2.5. It's graded AU50. We ended up handling the top pop for this, which was a Mint State 63. They come extremely weakly struck. A lot of issues with them being made in that time period. And people like these coins with a little bit more extra detail. A lot of them are just completely worn down, polished, or they've been melted. And so this one is a better date, and people really like it. I think the mintage is around 150,000, but very low in the population or availability of them. And then we have people's favorite mint, the Charlotte Mint. This is from 1858, $2.5 gold piece. Great remaining luster. Um, something that hasn't popped up in auction in many years. And so we wanted to give that one a shot. And here is an 1894 two and a half. This has a mintage of 4,000 and it's a graded mint state 63, also CAC approved. And this one will be a few dollars overbid on our website, akushacollectibles.com. 
So we ended up buying this 1877 Carson City seated half dollar this weekend. It's graded VF 35. Uh, you know, it, it has a lot of good original things to it. It's a little toned on the back. But when you're looking at this in terms of availability, a lot of these haven't been offered in many years for auction. And so we saw this coin and we thought, man, let's give it a shot. Try to pick it up because this date is highly sought after and the supply is very low. 26S is another coveted date in the Standing Liberty Quarter Series in AU55. Once again, good remaining luster for an AU. Really close to an AU58 in our opinion, but that's okay. We're going to leave that for the next collector. And we have this 92cc Morgan Dollar in 64 proof like. So we normally buy 92ccs that are lower grade. This one's not only in mint state, but it's also proof like. Great, nice, flashy mirrors on the coin. And something that you always can't go wrong with, which is a 14D Lincoln cent, and is graded VF20. And so we try to buy all these that we can, especially ones that are nice, genuine, and straight graded. And so, bada bing, bada boom, swiggity swaggity, we got these coins too. So as you guys know, we're trying to move more into paper as we learn more about it. And so we ended up buying these two Colombian Expo tickets this weekend. They were made for the Colombian Expo uh, in May 30th of 1893. There's two different designs we want to talk to you about, and they're actually pretty high grade as well. So the first one is with the Colombian design on the obverse, nice reds to the to the piece of paper. It is graded PMG 66 EPQ. And you know, this is the most notable design, I think, from the Columbian Expo because it is at the Columbian half dollar design on the note. And then we have a George Washington World's Columbian Expo Fair. And this one is nice blues to it, and it's graded PMG 65 EPQ. And when we bought these last time, they were picked up pretty quickly just because it was a notable time for numismatics and it's just cool to be able to hold a piece of history in your hand for an affordable price. And so I want to give a special thanks to Minden Coin this weekend for holding these back for us and letting them be offered to you guys on AcousticCollectibles.com.